stay focused on the things that you can control and learn to looking at the whole, the person as a whole, what's going on in their life, acknowledge it because without acknowledging it, you're not going to be able to go to the next step. Greetings fellow survivors, thrivers, and healers. I am Natep Set, founder of Thrivers Inspire Healing, and I hope you all are having a great day. So today's topic will be about the steps to take prior to starting a new health regimen, because let's face it, how many times are we out there, we may experience an, uh, an ailment or an illness and, you know, desperate to just feel better and look for answers we may grab anything right the first thing that comes i'm gonna try this i'm gonna try this i'm gonna try this right and that is completely understandable however you have to take the proper steps pr to understand what's really going on prior to implementing any new regimen before we get into anything please be sure to check with your doctor your qualified health care physician of the person that you see that takes care of your medical needs, the professional, okay? And today I will be going over these steps, utilizing how I did it for my own personal health journey. Okay, so step number one, recognize the problem. Because when it comes to any problem, the first step in order to help remedy it is to acknowledge it. So recognize the problem, acknowledging what was the problem. In my personal experience, the issue was the different joint pains that I was experiencing. That wasn't something that I've ever experienced before, okay? I was young and I'm like, this is something that elderly people experience, right? Mm. However, I had no idea what was really going on. But first I had to acknowledge that something was going on because joint pain in the fingers, hands, waking up swelling, swelling, hands, clenched fists, uh, joint pain in the jaw, and more that I talk about in this previous video here, right? It was just something totally different for me, especially for someone who was very active and healthy for the most part in their life, right? So I had acknowledged the problem. Second, I had to understand the nature of the illness lupus when i was told it was lupus i didn't know what that was what's lupus never heard of it nothing right totally new thing to me so what did i have to do i had to learn about it when the doctor told me about it they told me a little bit you know it's when your immune system attacks your your healthy tissues so it's not just the the um bacteria or anything of that nature it's also the healthy tissues the healthy cells that's what is said in the books so it's like, hmm, okay, this is different. And then going down the rabbit hole of what's going on with this, different triggers, what can trigger a flare, which is when the disease is just, the immune system is going haywire, just attacking everything, right? And I was like, okay, this is interesting. So definitely had to figure it out. I had to see how far, how much, activity was going on so what did i do when i went to the doctors i did get some labs done okay they drew blood work they asked me how i was feeling they we marked down all the symptoms and what was going on so everything was being documented so that a clearer picture was shown so that we can look at the next steps right and that would include also looking at the mental health, the stress, because according to what I had learned about lupus and part of the triggers of a flare is stress levels, mental health stress. So at that time in my life, I was just finishing up my first year, my first semester actually in college, okay? It was a new thing, new environment, new friends, just everything new, different types of homework, different things, studying, you know, completely different from high school. Um, and I also had a little pressure on myself. 
I wanted to challenge myself to get like straight A's. Cause I was a terrible high school student, okay? Let's just, <laughs> I was terrible, but I was an excellent college student. So I had to go through and realize that any stress, even if it was a subconscious type of stress, okay? From putting that pressure behind myself, it really wasn't that bad guys. But I guess at the time for me, it just felt like that. And you know, knowing me, I may feel something stressful and because I'm so focused on a specific goal, I'll probably, you know, try to push it, push it out the way. But you know, our bodies, they are like this thing where it, it, it will definitely hold on to any uh, stresses or any um, emotions, right? Some people can uh, speak on the body keeps the score book right and it does talk about how our bodies hold on to any negative and even positive emotions right with the uh, secretions of different hormones we have the the happy hormones like the oxytocin and the serotonin but we also have the stress ones such as the cortisol so i would say that during that time of my diagnosis i probably had really high levels of cortisol right and we do need certain levels of cortisol in our bodies however having too much can make us susceptible to illness and disease so that was a thing that i had to look at right and another thing right is my lifestyle what was i eating what were my food choices what what what, what type of exercise so Again, when I went to college, I had this thing where I was like, okay, I want to do my best. And in order to do my best, I have to eat the best that I can, right? So what was I thinking? I had college food as my <laughs> options. And it is what it is. So I did my best picking out the fruits, the vegetables, the carbs, the proteins, all that stuff that allowed me, right? That I thought at that time, would help me to perform my best, to be as healthy as possible so I can just be successful at what it is that I was aspiring to do, okay? And when it came to my exercise, I was mostly, I wasn't like working out or anything, but I was definitely walking to and from class, you know, walking up and down the stairs. We did not have elevators in our dorms. So it was, and I was like on the third floor. So three flights of stairs, right? Every day up and down. Um, and you know, going to and forth class and dancing and getting my little stretches on because that's what I like to do. So I was like, okay, well, this is my lifestyle, which is another reason why I was confused that I was hmm, diagnosed with this. But again, the nature of the disease is, they say it's not only about stress, and you know the foods that you're eating but it could be a genetic or an environmental factor so that's something right that we had to take into consideration so the next thing that i had to look at was the possible solutions on how to remedy the situation right because i was feeling terrible i was tired i had so much joint pain you know I, my weight was i was losing weight and i was like this is this is just ridiculous right so i was like okay so we you know the doctor and the doctor's like these are your options okay so i went to an allopathic doctor allopathic right and that doctor they basically in their form of healing is basically these are the pharmaceutical medicines that will help you to get better and boom so the treatment of the sy symptoms and what were my symptoms so the swelling the joint pain whatever I was given prednisone and um, hydroxychloroquine. So those were my medicines that I took. That was my option at the time. And also to reduce stress, that's what they were saying. But they never mentioned anything about certain types of foods. Afterwards, I have decided to just go along with it because my goal was really to feel better and, you know, go, get through school, graduate, and just quiet, quiet, right? No more. No more lupus. <laughs> Not necessarily cured, but like, okay, let's just get all this out of the way because 
this is in the way of what I wanted to do. <laughs> so that was my thing. And then the last step that I had to take, of course, was to outline my plan. So in addition to taking the medicine, reducing the stress, okay? So I saw a school counselor for a little bit at the time just to get to have another place to pour out my feelings because once I, again, once again, when I spoke on how our emotions can stay in the body, you know, I was like, no, 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 we gotta, I gotta get it out. I gotta get it out. So I'm talking to uh, the, 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 the on-campus counselor and you know she's actually hooking me up with some resources that helped me out okay and then um i also you know connected with some friends that i felt like i could really trust you know because at the time i wasn't really speaking a lot on it and uh so yeah um so i did that and you know stayed close with uh, my mom, who I spoke with, and she helped me to coordinate with uh, the appointments as well as, you know, because I already had enough on my plate with school, right? And some would say, mm, do the opposite. Focus on your health first, right? So, but uh, eventually on my journey, of course, I ended up prioritizing things correctly. <laughs> so, but yeah, it has been a 17-year journey. Can you believe it? 17 years since I've been diagnosed with lupus. And so, of course, I'm doing much better now. And um, yes, I did have the end-stage renal disease. And of course, even considering that, I'm still doing much better. Again, like you guys seen my exercise videos and all that type of stuff. Step number one, recognize the problem. Okay, understand the symptoms, what's going on. Acknowledge it, because without acknowledging it, you're not going to be able to go to the next step, which is to learn as much about the illness as possible. What's its origins, where it's come from. If you can, you must get the labs, okay? Some people are uh, um, reluctant to do that, okay? But considering this new technology that we do have, get the labs. It makes it so much easier because so many diseases mimic other diseases that's why it took so long for people in the past to diagnose lupus um because it's like okay it can do this do this but now they're finding certain markers on certain blood and, and certain genes or whatever the case is that can help identify um proneness or oh this is it when this is active this is it and you can't always see that on the outside okay so i am an advocate for integrative medicine not only looking at the blood work but also looking at the mental health looking at the mental health part your stress looking at the whole the person as a whole what's going on in their life okay so that's part of what i had to do also looking at the foods the lifestyle how was my exercise what was going on okay how was i taking care of myself could i have done better all right and then next looking at what the doctors say getting a second opinion a third opinion whatever what were the remedies to this illness what were the remedies and for me at the time because it was so bad right and i wanted to quickly feel better of course so i ended up taking the medicine okay that was my route some people may take the medicine, some people do herbal, some people, and combination, okay? Because of course, when I was younger, I didn't know as much as I know now, as is said plenty of times, part of the human experience, right? And then, of course, we look at the outline, right? The outline of what, how we're gonna implement. So for me, I said, all right, I'm gonna take the medicine. I'm going to get the food in, I'm to get the proper foods in, avoid the dairy, get some light exercise and continue with my stretching, okay? Because I didn't want to get stiff and all that stuff. So continue with my stretching, um, 
and then remove stressors, okay? Don't be stressing about things that I cannot control. That is one of the biggest things that can really get you, all right? So stay focused on the things that you can control and learn to deal with what you can. Don't be worrying about things you can't control, okay? And then, of course, stay on top of it. And it's always good to stay on top of the latest and new research because you never know what's gonna come out, you know? And always speak with your doctor, of course. And that's what I did. That's what I did. When I had issues, when I had a really, really bad, bad flare, where it was like really affecting my, really affecting my kidneys, there was something, they ended up doing plasma phoresis on me. At the time, I don't think it was really done for lupus and any out of control autoimmune things. And I think now they're doing it more often and that helped me so much. You know, my immune system was knocked out for a little bit, but once everything rebuilt and all type of stuff, plasma exchange, everything was rebuilt. It was like, mm, I was a new woman. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been feeling really good. I mean, you guys could check out my exercise and yoga videos. And of course, I'll be having more for you. So let me know in the comments below the different steps that you have taken when you found out that you had a health situation or illness. Have, did you go through these type of steps or did you try something else? Did it work for you? Did it not? Let me know in the comments below, okay? All right. So with that being said, until next time.